Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah. Today I'm going to talk to you about healing piercings because I have, I think, 24, 23, 25 of them. All of them are healed except one, which have been honestly ridiculously frustrating to have to heal and I have managed to do it. So I'm going to share my tips with you. Before starting, I do want to say that some people just have harder genetics to heal piercings. So after you get your piercing, and if you are one of those people that can only sleep on your sides, AKA me, or on your stomach, AKA me, and I just cannot lie there on my back because I'm so scared of getting sleep paralysis, even though I've never had sleep paralysis, but I'm terrified of it. Um, I highly recommend getting a treble pillow. This is the best one that I have found. It is made of memory foam and I like that it's open like this. So then you can like really just prop it up against there and then you have enough space. It's perfect. I will link it down below in case you want to get the same one that I have. It is really good. Also just good for travel. But if you want to get a ton of piercings and be safe, boom, easy peasy. Going on to cleaning, I always recommend taking a bowl like this kind of like smaller if you can this is perfect for piercings on here or on your belly button because then you can soak it like this and just lie back while you are doing your sea salt soak so i recommend doing a pinch of sea salt not too much because if you put too much you're going to irritate your piercing even more and it won't it'll kind of just delay the healing process time. so literally just a pinch of salt and boil some water let the water cool down to the point that you can touch it and it's not burning your skin and then kind of like soak your piercing in that for five to ten minutes then once you are done you want to take a q-tip and clean your piercing and get any crusties off. Do not force the crusties off. Just gently go with a q-tip around the piercing and try and move the crust. But do not force it off like, like you're scraping it because you're just going to irritate the piercing more and it just won't be good. What you want to do is clean it like that. The upper cartilage piercings are more difficult. So what I usually would do is soak the q-tip in here and then just kind of like put it against the piercing keep it there make sure it is like dripping soaking and just kind of keep it there move it around but not too hard very very gently and just turn it around turn it the other way around and if your piercing is able to be moved around and it does not have any crusties on it i recommend moving it around with clean hands with the q-tip after you're done, take a new Q-tip and just dry the area. Again, do not force your piercing to move because that will just irritate it even more. What we're trying to do is just clean it with the sea salt and water soak. Next, I highly recommend if you don't normally take vitamin C and zinc, I recommend during the healing process to take vitamin C and zinc to help your immune system. Just give it like a little boost so that it can assist in the healing process. Not a requirement, just a thought helps me out sometimes especially when I do have irritated piercings and I just want to speed up the process a little bit. Always remember after a shower to rinse your piercings because you might get product or gunk in it from your shampoo, conditioner, any other body products. So just give it a rinse with water depending on where it is and once you are out dry it again with a q-tip. Obviously, avoid going to saunas or bodies of water that are natural. Avoid taking baths. Anything that will that you would when you have an open wound, you want to be taking care of that so it doesn't get infected because... Yeah. When I had my nose piercings being really irritated, I was stupid. I was stupid. Do not do this. <laughs> I went to the beach. I think it was about a month after I got my nose piercings. I irritated them so bad. They took like eight months to heal, six months to heal. So I was doing that sea salt soak every single day for about four to five months. So if you don't want that to happen to you and you don't have the persistence and <laughs> the patience to sea salt soak, don't do it. Just don't do it. Just wait. Just wait to submerge your face because I just wanted to play mermaids and I'm silly and was like, I'm going to go swim in the ocean. It's going to be fine. No. Infection. Don't do it. Not worth it. It was kind of worth it. It's fine. I, I made it work. 
just do it, live your life, whatever. But just remember you have to do the precautions of then cleaning it all the time and making sure you are safe and not infected and get flesh eating bacteria. And then you have to cut your nose off. No, that's drastic. That wouldn't happen. I don't think. Do not fiddle with them. Sleep on safe pillows. Don't sleep on the side that you have the piercing on. I know we can't control how we sleep, but getting a pillow really helps with the controlling of doing that. And also, if you are trying to avoid sleeping on one side, but you sleep on your side, I recommend propping a pillow behind you so then you don't, you're don't you not able to like fully turn during the nighttime. That helps. I have a ton of plushies in my bed, and whenever I get tattooed, I always do that, so then it helps with that as well. Always clean your hands. Look, I know it's hard. When you get home, you're like, oh, COVID isn't a thing anymore. I'm not going to incessantly wash my hands all the time. Pretend that you have shit all over your hands all the time. What do you do when you have shit in your hands? You clean them. So that's what we're gonna do. For the whole time that your piercing's healing, you're gonna be like, ah, poop on my hands yet again. What are we gonna do? Clean them. Then they're gonna be clean until you touch something again. And would you ever touch your healing piercing with poop on your hands? No, you wouldn't. So go clean those hands because you got poop on them. And all that poop is gonna go on your phone and everything you touch. Poop on your food, everything. Cooking, poop on your food now. What are you gonna do? Clean your hands. It's a fun little thing that I like to think about because then it really just makes me wanna wash my hands all the time and be as clean as possible with my piercings. Clean them before you do the sea salt soak, clean them after you do the sea salt soak. Dry it with clean hands and then, you know what? Clean your hands again for a good measure. Why not? Clean hands, no poop. Then you can go cook and what happens? No shit on your food. Also, do not use hydrogen peroxide on your piercings. It will just irritate them and make them feel more raw or irritate the healing process. So don't do that. Sea salt soak is your best friend. I have also heard, and when my nose piercing was really infected, I did do a tea tree oil soak where I put one drop of tea tree oil in water, but I realized that just ended up making it more irritated, so I just went back to my sea salt soak. That once again took several months to heal, but it's the best we could do. Always wear the correct jewelry for your piercings because that will always irritate them. For example, with this one here, basically the bar I was using was too short, so I just switched it to a long bar and it instantly it's no longer irritated i had all these crusties behind my ear because it was pushing into the piercing and it just irritated the hole so now she is all good all fine no more pus no more no more irritation so it's always good to have a longer barbell and then switch to a smaller one once you are once it is healed more but during the healing process it is good to have the longer bar always consult with your piercer when you should change your bar and if your piercing is irritated i recommend going to your piercer and asking them whether you need to size up or size down because both of those will be a thing i had to do it several times for my schnipple piercing where i changed it to a smaller bar because it had been a year since i got it and then it instantly got irritated i didn't know what i was doing wrong went to my piercer well, not my piercer specifically, but I went to a piercing studio and I was like, what is wrong with her? And they were like, the bar is too small, you need to size up again. And I was like, cool, we'll do that. And then I sized up and then it was fine again. Consult piercers, they are there to help you. Also do not use antibacterial soap for your piercings. They will get irritated by that. Use a mild fragrance-free cleanser. Those are good. So it really depends on your genetics and your general health on how fast a piercing will heal. So please be patient with yourself. And ultimately, sometimes we just do not have the anatomy for certain piercings. For example, I had eyebrow piercings here and here. I took them out shortly after I got them because I realized my anatomy is not correct. I don't have enough skin to grab and pinch, so the piercing couldn't set there properly and it couldn't chill there without irritating my skin and it eventually rejected but that being said surface piercings do tend to reject more more easily so could have been the piercing being pierced in the wrong area could be because i don't have the anatomy to have the piercing or it could be because surface piercings just tend to reject so sadly these things do happen so obviously consult your piercer if you have been cleaning it and it's just slowly migrating. That is also what happened with my 
schnipple piercing the first time I got it. It healed up fine, then eventually it slowly started migrating out of my schnipple and rejecting and almost fell out, so I just took it out myself. Waited a few years, got it re-pierced again behind, and oh boy, it does hurt when you re-pierce scar tissue, so... Really glad I didn't actually know that before I got it pierced because I probably wouldn't have done it and if it ever starts rejecting again and falls out, I'm not getting it re-pierced because holy fuck, that hurts so bad. Sometimes we sadly don't have the anatomy for things, but you can really keep trying if you want to <laughs> with the right form of dedication. <laughs> and always try and get jewelry that is as high quality as possible. I recommend titanium, gold, or silver. Some people do have different allergies to different metals, so it's kind of trial and error type vibe to go with it. It really sucks for me to say that, but you don't know until you try which metals you are allergic to. I am blessed on the lucky side that I do not really have metal allergies. I can wear anything from titanium up, but um, lower quality jewelry does tend to irritate my skin and my piercings and it will always raise my tattoos which is really weird if I wear like bracelets or rings that are a lower grade metal. I really hope some of these tips helped you and if you are getting a piercing tell me about it, tell me what you're getting. If you have a nightmare piercing healing story tell me about it too but if you're one of the lucky ones then good for you. Slay. I love this for you. <laughs> I'm sad that we all can't be like you. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if it helped you or send it to someone who it may help. See you next week. Bye.